Psychoactive Drugs Psychoactive or psychotropic drugs are chemical substances which have the ability to alter a person's state of consciousness by stimulating change within the nervous system our perception of reality mood cognitive function and behavior can all be altered giving the user a glimpse into other worlds drugs are able to bring humans into the neighborhood of divine experience and can thus carry us up from our personal fate and the everyday circumstances of our life into a higher form of reality it is however necessary to understand precisely what is meant by the use of drugs we do not mean the purely physical craving that of which we speak is something much higher namely the knowledge of the possibility of the soul to enter into a lighter being and to catch a glimpse of deeper insights and more magnificent visions of the beauty truth and the divine that we are normally able to spy through the cracks in our prison cell but there are not many drugs which have the power of stilling such craving the entire catalog at least to the extent that research has thus far written it may include only opium hashish and in rarer cases alcohol which has enlightening effects only upon very particular characters fitz hugh ludlow the hashish eater 1857 there is archaeological evidence of the use of psychoactive substances mostly through plant and plant extracts going back at least 10000 years as cultures evolved the use of nature's bounty of plants and other naturally occurring substances were used for medical purposes and because of the interrelationship between traditional spiritual beliefs and spiritual healers these substances were used as part of their religious practices in an attempt to gain subconscious insight as to the underlying cause of many of their illnesses the native american indians used peyote cacti which contains mescaline a naturally occurring psychedelic substance which promotes hallucinations similar to lsd its use in religious ceremonies dates back almost six thousand years peyote buttons are usually dried and then chewed they can also be consumed as a drink like tea other times the buttons are ground into a powder and taken as either a capsule or smoked with tobacco or cannabis peyote is considered to be an illegal drug in the united states however in 1994 there was an amendment to the american indian religious freedoms act which gave the native americans the legal right to use peyote for religious purposes ayahuasca is another psychoactive substance used throughout south america described as an entheogenic brew it is a mixture of specific ingredients designed to transcend the conscious mind into alternative states of reality used primarily in religious and healing ceremonies the effects of drinking this brew have been compared to that of the near-death experience 
The main ingredients used are Banisteriopsis capivine and Psychotria viridis shrubs or Diplopteris cabrerana as a substitute together with a variety of other ingredients depending upon the geographical area. Another common and naturally occurring psychoactive drug found throughout the world is cannabis, also known as marijuana. This plant has been used for thousands of years as a medicine to relieve a number of unwanted symptoms and also in religious and shamanistic ceremonies. Although cannabis has a long history of use, modern governments have proactively tried to restrict its use, suggesting it is a gateway drug into a life of addiction and self-abuse. However, many people who use the plant do not agree with their government's stance on its limitations, suggesting alcohol to be far more dangerous to overall health. Amanita muscara, also known as fly agaric or fly amanita, is a psychoactive mushroom which originated around temperate parts of the northern hemisphere. The amanita family of mushrooms are some of the deadliest mushrooms in the world, containing chemicals which can kill. Although the Amanita muscara is part of this family, its deadly potential is limited. It contains ibotenic acid and muscimol, both psychoactive compounds. However, it also contains a dangerous chemical called muscarin, which is usually present in only relatively small amounts. But because each mushroom contains varying amounts of these chemicals, they can still pose a risk when eaten. During the Middle Ages, the mushroom was used to kill flies. Chopped up and mixed with milk, it would attract flies and then poison them. Reindeer have a particular liking for these mushrooms. They will eat them with pleasure often showing the effects of the mushroom's hallucinogenic properties in their mannerisms. It is said that herdsmen would feed their reindeer with the mushroom, then drink the animal's urine, which had filtered the dangerous muscarin out via the liver, producing a psychoactive drink. This may be where the concept of flying reindeer comes from. A few years ago, Brian Rose, an American-born former banker and founder of London Real TV, took a trip to Costa Rica to participate in an intense experience with ayahuasca. Although Rose had taken the drug before, it didn't have the profound impact that he was looking for and agreed on this occasion to try a more concentrated version. Shamans in the old world would consume the ayahuasca brew as part of their traditional ceremonies when trying to gain insight into a person's affairs. Once under the influence, the shaman could see with greater depth and clarity what deep-rooted problems could be causing the recipient's discomfort. Only relatively recently has the ayahuasca experience been made available to people outside the shamanistic traditions. After taking the brown liquid, Brian Rose lay down, accompanied by his shaman guide and a couple of friends who had also taken the brew. After some time, the drug began to take effect. I sat back and had the most profound experience of my entire life. It was slow to set, 
but after it happened, I was really in a lot of physical pain and trauma. The medicine was going through my body. I was feeling tormented. I was feeling like I was barely making it. At this point, Rose connects with an alternative consciousness, as though he had merged with Gaia, who was about to reveal to him his full purpose in life and his relationship to all other life forms that exist in this reality. He describes it as being totally dissolved, with every atom in his body fragmented and spread out into nature. After a few hours in this new state, his body began to purge the toxic mixture which made him throw up. When hallucinating under psychotropic drugs, time loses its rigidity. It becomes loose and variable. One hour can seem like ten hours, or even ten days. The thinking process of the mind race to accommodate thoughts at varying rates, giving the perception of being out of step with time. After the initial purging, Rose said his personal version of the Ten Commandments were revealed to him. Areas in his life which he needed to work on to improve his overall balance with nature and the people in his life which were close to him. The first one was just complete disillusion. What it was like to be completely dissolved as a human being. What it was like to be part of nature, what it was like to actually die. The emotions that are involved in that, the whole cycle of life that you see in Gaia, whether it's animals eating animals, or plants decaying into insects, and how, in fact, a human death is not really significant, only in your mind. We are just part of this higher ecosystem which just keeps going and going. Each ayahuasca experience is unique to the individual. It is as though they connect to a part of themselves which is timeless, their higher self if you will, and a level of consciousness which sees things holistically. In a recent interview with Joe Rogan, Graham Hancock, a British writer and journalist, discussed his knowledge and experience with ayahuasca. The entities which you encounter, I'm not making any claims about the reality status of these entities, but what I am saying, and it's a fact, that people who work with DMT and ayahuasca do encounter what they construe to be entities who communicate with them intelligently. Ayahuasca is an example of ancient Amazonian science. From the 150,000 different species of plants and trees living in the Amazon, someone in our past discovered that by mixing and boiling two different shrubs together, a remarkable drug can be produced which promotes altered states of consciousness. The active ingredient in ayahuasca is DMT, which is normally neutralized within the gut by an enzyme called monoamine oxidase. However, the ayahuasca vine contains a monoamine oxidase inhibitor which switches off the enzyme in the gut allowing the DMT to penetrate into the blood. Ayahuasca means the vine of the dead and what it's connected to in South American religions and spiritual thinking is what happens to us when we die. The Tucano people native to the Amazon have a similar belief in the afterlife as to the indigenous people who lived in the Mississippi Valley 
both believed that when ayahuasca is taken, the journey embarked upon takes the recipient into the realm of the afterlife. Moreover, on actual death, the soul ascends to the constellation of Orion, where it will then transit over to make a journey along the Milky Way, which they call the Path of Souls. Here challenges and ordeals are encountered, in which the soul must account for the life it has just lived. This belief is almost exactly the same as the Egyptian belief concerning the departing soul. Ayahuasca allows us, from the land of the living, to take a glimpse into alternative realms of the afterlife where it is possible to communicate with other entities. This is a technology for assessing other levels of reality and it's clear that the Native Americans had a number of advanced technologies in this area. Hancock suggests that this Amazonian technology allowing people to transcend this reality is part of a legacy inherited by various cultures around the world from a remote common ancestor which was more or less destroyed in a global cataclysm thousands of years ago. He also suggests that there could be a connection between the artwork and geoglyphs found in these places and some ancient shamanistic visions. In 1938, Albert Hoffman developed the drug LSD while working on new drugs to stimulate the circulation of blood throughout the body. As a Swiss-born chemist, he worked at the prestigious lab of Sandoz, a large pharmaceutical company in Basel, Switzerland. After the creation of LSD-25, the initial studies showed limited promise, so the drug was shelved for a number of years. Five years later, in 1943, while synthesizing a new test sample, Hoffman accidentally absorbed some of the LSD liquid through his skin, making him feel quite strange. He recorded in his notes, A remarkable restlessness combined with a slight dizziness. Concerned with his condition, Hoffman went home early to relax and monitor his situation and experience. He wrote, Fantastic pictures, extraordinary shapes with intense kaleidoscopic plays of colour. The next morning, Hoffman felt fine. Furthermore, on returning to the lab, he decided that he would take a small amount of this new substance in a loosely controlled experiment. The following Monday, April the 19th, 1943, Hoffman ingested 0.2 milligrams of LSD-25. Forty minutes later, he began to feel the effects and asked his lab assistant to help him get home. However, due to the restrictions placed on motor transport throughout World War II, the only transport available was a bicycle. This famous journey, the first cycle trip on acid, is now known as Bicycle Day and is now celebrated all around the world on April the 19th by fans and followers of Albert Hoffman and LSD. At home, Hoffman was able to totally absorb his experience. His family were away for the week, allowing him to fully explore his profound psychotropic experience unmolested. At one point, as he lay on his bed, he describes how his conscious perspective was lifted up and out towards the ceiling, where he was able to view what he thought 
was his dead body. Colours became vibrant and vivid, forming kaleidoscopic images together with hallucinations of all kinds of magical and wonderful shapes. To his surprise, he woke up the next morning feeling remarkably refreshed, like a rebirth. He went outside into his garden to find everything was sparkling with life. Although the drug did not work as a circulatory stimulant, Hoffman and his colleagues at Sandoz came to the conclusion that the drug had great potential as a tool for studying how the mind works. Each individual who experiences LSD enters another reality. He enters another world, seemingly even more real than actual reality. Until that day, I had always thought there was only one reality. Suddenly, I was experiencing another. LSD is just a tool to turn us into what we are supposed to be. Through my LSD experience, and my new picture of reality, I became aware of the wonder of creation, the magnificence of nature, and the animal and plant kingdom. I became very sensitive to what will happen to all this and all of us. When considering all these different types of experiences, whether it is the near-death or psychotropic experience, the common denominator appears to be a shift in consciousness to alternative states of reality. Although most of the mainstream scientific community would not like to admit it, human consciousness appears to exist independent of the biological brain and functions of the physical body. It is as though the body and brain are just vehicles which allow our consciousness to experience this earthly physical reality from a unique, independent and detached perspective. And when the body expires, our conscious point of attention shifts back to where it once came, an ocean of timeless and limitless consciousness. I don't believe that consciousness is generated by the brain. I believe that the brain is more of a receiver of consciousness. Graham Hancock You are not limited to this body, to this mind, or to this reality. You are a limitless ocean of consciousness, imbued with infinite potential. You are existence itself. Joseph P. Kaufman